Well, welcome everybody. I'm glad you could join us this morning. So we're gonna be playing with some of the things. What we're gonna focus on today are the new mixed media ink little kits. So they all come with a little ink and ink pad and they come in different colors. Um, and my name is Tammy. I've been designing for Clear Snap for uh, a while. So I use things that I personally like and enjoy and like to recommend. So Clear Snap has been a long time part of my design career and my crafting. So we're gonna make this little tin today. And my goal in my head was, because it is a mixed media ink, I wanted to get as many surfaces as I could in one little concise project for you to play with. So you could see how the ink works on all these different surfaces. Okay, so that's kind of my goal in the class today is to show you what you can do with it. So we're gonna start, I will tell you that they, because they come in individual packs, they're assuming when you get the ink, you're gonna put it on the pad. Um, they are solvent based, so they are quick drying, which is why instead of giving you an ink pad, you get an ink pad and a re-inker, okay? So when you first use it, you ink it pretty well. And then when you go back to reuse it, you will find the pad has dried a little bit, so you need to refresh it. You can extend the life a little bit by storing all of your um, little pads and your inks in an airtight container. Do ink the whole pad and just set the bottle once you ink the pad with that pad. So that when I, you know, say if you need a little more black, you'll know that's the black one. So the different surfaces we're gonna use, obviously we're gonna use the tin. I'm gonna show you that you can emboss with this ink. I'm gonna show you you can use it on photo paper, which is slick and slippery. I'm gonna show you you can use it on a canvas. I'm gonna show you how to stamp with it. I'm gonna show you how to just create an ombre. And I'm also gonna show you how to stencil with it. You can't use dye inks on everything. You can't use chalk ink on everything. Um, slick surfaces take a special ink. Canvases, you need it to move, you need a different ink. Well, this is one ink where when they come to you with that question, you can say this ink. You need the, the color box um, mixed media ink. You'll be able to use that on every surface. So it's very versatile. It should be a good seller in your stores because of its versatility. How many of y'all are familiar with the magic stamp? But what it does is it will take the impression of anything you impress in it. If you have a stamp that you would like to have a negative of, like how many of us have stamped something and thought, oh, it'd be awesome to have a negative of that stamp. Okay, you can do it with this. You can make a negative of your stamp. How many of y'all have looked at a key and thought, wow, that'd make a cool stamp. Okay, anything that you can impress in this, you can make a stamp out of. And then you can reheat it and make another stamp. So you use it over and over and over. So today what we're using is we're gonna crumple up some foil to make our stamp. Because all I wanted was a little texture on here. I didn't want this to be solid. I wanted to stamp a little texture on it. So what I'm doing is I took my foil and I crumpled it up. You can get as much crumple in there as you want. There is definitely not a science to this. So I'm gonna heat my magic stamp. You don't have to heat it a lot, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna press it into my stamp here. All right, so now I'm done with that. So I wanna do something else. I heat it again and it disappears. Okay, so you can use it over and over and over again. You can rinse the ink off of them. If they stain, you know, it's fine. So what I want you to do is, I want you to take three blocks because we are gonna use three different colors. So I want you to take three of your blocks, heat them, and press your foil into it. If you aren't happy with how it turned out, heat it again and stamp it again. Do it to three of them? Do it to three of them. And here, I don't need the heat gun. I've got one over here I can use. If, I would say 30 seconds, 40 seconds is more than enough. Do that right away Just stamp it right time. away. Yes, yes ma'am. Do work one block at a time. You won't have to hold it very long, but I would recommend the harder you press, the better your impression's gonna be. Okay, so then we're gonna work on our tins. So the quicker you work, the more intense your color will be because they are solvent based, so they will dry on metal. We don't have to heat set them. Eventually they would dry fairly quickly, but we do want to heat set them because we're going to emboss. So I would just say to work a little quicker. When you open your tin, we are working on the lid. 
Okay, so that's the bigger part with a lip is what we're working on. So you're gonna wanna take your stamp and dip it into your pink ink and stamp a couple different places. Then you wanna take a new block, that's why I had you make three, and put it into your orange and stamp a couple places. And do the same thing with a khaki. We are not trying to completely cover it. If you want to completely cover it, it's fine. But we're just trying to add a little texture. And then um, you might want to go back over it with the first color with the pink again. And once you have it all inked, you're going to open your paper and sprinkle it with the embossing powder and heat set it. Be careful you don't touch your tin. They will get hot. They are metal. So sprinkle it on there really well. You'll see that it does stick to your ink. And again, on a normal solvent ink, you're gonna have trouble getting an embossing powder to stick. And then if y'all would, you can just dump the excess back. And then you just heat set your tin, but just set it down on the work surface and heat set it. Just be sure you don't touch. Yes, ma'am. Just open it and sprinkle it across your tin. Yeah, because you're gonna tap it all off. So just make sure it's all covered and then turn it upside down and tap it. So if you're happy with it, leave it. If you wanted it to be super shiny, you could heat it and add more embossing powder. You can keep layering embossing powder for quite a while. You can add two or three layers to it. The next thing we are gonna talk about is using it on a slick surface, okay? We used photo paper because it's easy, but any slick surface, okay? So what I did is I took, who's used these stylus and tips? These are awesome. They come in bulk. If you sell your students the handles, they'll be coming to you for these tips for everything. <laughs> you get them trained. Um, my personal preference for it is if you have a big full-size pad, how hard is it to ink the edge of something? Or if you want to ink a little thing on a wood thing. I like to call these paint brushes for my inks. I can take any paint pad, dip it in it, and transfer the ink. Okay, so we're just showing you a different way to use these. So we already have the ink on our pads. We're gonna use these to pick it up. If your pads are a little dry, just re-ink. But you're gonna dip, you're gonna press pretty firmly. Now if you're using this with a juicy pad, like a pigment ink or a chalk ink, you can really just tap. But this pad, you're gonna have to press a little to pick up the ink. And then you're gonna use your stylus, like a paintbrush, and you're gonna paint pink. You're gonna take a clean stylus and press it into your orange. You're gonna do an orange stripe. You're gonna blend with the pink a little bit and you've got two extra tips to take them off. See the little tab on the back? You just press and they come off. To put them on, you just put it down on your surface and put that same tab back in. So change out your tip and do the khaki. And all we're doing is using it like you would a paintbrush and you can work on the paper towel or the paper you have. Paint your pink, overlap a little bit, do your orange, overlap a little bit and do your khaki. And then heat set it, okay? You are gonna heat set carefully because it is photo paper. If you get it too close, it's gonna blister. You can just take a drop and wow. apply it directly and now you have a little mini ink pad, right? So hopefully you're all are liking how the inks are blending, how they're working on that photo paper. We may not even need to heat set it here. But we do want to heat set it a little bit because we're going to stamp it because the um, because their um, solvent ink when you uh, when you touch fresh ink to old ink it is going to want to reactivate the ink below it. So if you don't heat set it and you stamp on top of it, you might have some bleed. So we just want to be sure that that ink is set and dry, so that we are only applying wet ink to dry ink not wet to wet. You'll get a different look if you go wet to wet. Okay, so once you have that done, you wanna heat set it real quick, and then we are gonna, this is one of the Teresa Collins stamps, we are gonna ink it with black, and we're gonna stamp on the photo paper. And in my world, my top was pink. Your top does not have to be pink. Your top can be whatever color, whatever way you want it. Um, how many people ask you, well, how can I stamp multicolor of ink on one stamp? How, what, how do I do that technique? Well, you know, here's a really cheap, easy way. <laughs> you use these little styluses, you dip them in your pad, and you can put the ink wherever you want it. Okay, so now I want to show you how it works on canvas. 
but we're gonna go back to our trusty little stylus tips. You're gonna wanna take the pink one, put a couple dabs of pink down. You wanna take your orange one, put a couple dabs of orange, and you wanna kinda of use a circular motion, and you'll watch the colors as they kinda of blend together. If the brush is uh, too dry, just add a few drops, but you wanna do pink, orange, and khaki, okay? And all we're looking for is to create a background color for our stencil. Yeah, I did all three colors on mine. It's up to y'all. Once you're done with it, go ahead and give your canvas a little heat set. And it shouldn't take very much. You'll see it go from looking wet to looking matte and you'll know you're dry. Okay, and just one quick little thing too. If you were not happy with your canvas, this is the stamp cleaner. This is the solvent ink um, stamp cleaner that we're gonna use to clean our stamps and stencils in a little bit. But yes, you could certainly put this on your canvas and wipe it off. You will get a little bit of a stain, but it'd be enough to be able to start over. So if you've got a student in a class, no, you do not have to hand them a new canvas. Okay, so now we're gonna play with the stencil. Well, we have a big stencil. You can decide where you want your stencil to live. Do you wanna do just the big petals? Do you wanna put it in the center so it looks like a flower? Um, what I did was I took the center and I put it in a corner so that I got kind of like an array, you know, where the design got bigger. But just lay it on the canvas, figure out where you're happy with it, how you want it. And then a good place to put your finger, if you're using that part of the uh, design, that center, a good place for your finger is that very center of the design. Since we're not using tape or anything, you could definitely tape these down, but um, just kind of hold your finger, use your gray ink, you can either go from your pad or you can put a little ink on here. I would not make it very juicy. For this particular application, we want it a little on the dry side because we're stenciling. What happens when you stencil with wet? It does, I don't care how talented you are, the wet is gonna flow under the stencil, okay? So when you stencil, you want it a little on the dry side. And again, I would use a circular motion just like we did. You're gonna take your gray and you're just gonna go in a circular motion until you do your design. You'll watch that ink blend with the colors underneath it. Okay, so is everybody happy with their canvas? Hopefully, okay. So, um, Jessica was nice enough to cut out some little words for me because I love altered books. I only tear up old books and old, old books that are already torn up or Reader's Digest books. To me, Reader's Digest books are in a whole different class. I'm, I feel no guilt tearing them up. They sit on everybody's shelves, nobody uses them. So um, each little baggie has a different word in it. So pick, pick a few little words that you wanna use to make your phrase. Um, my intention was this would be an awesome little gift to give a friend. Um, so I have friends, comfort, support, share with you. So whatever little phrase you want to put on there, I think there's some about art. Um, just pick two or three little different words. And uh, while y'all pick your words, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about glues. This is my go-to uh, glue for paper crafting classes because students can make mistakes and it's okay. The paper comes up. The, it used to be in a clear bottle. Now they have this little tube that's got this awesome precision tip. So when y'all got to put your words on, it's going to be awesome. But what I like about Zip Dry is, you know, you know those glue dots that you can kind of roll off of stuff? Well, if you have excess on your paper, your hands, whatever, it rubs right off, okay? So if they put down paper and it oozes, rubs right off, does not damage the paper. Um, everything dries nice and flat. Um, if they put down something crooked, they have a few minutes to pull it up or kind of, Give it a judge, okay? So we're using this to glue in our photo paper and make sure you're putting it in the lid part. The photo paper goes in the lid part and whenever you're gluing something big, something small to something big, so the paper is smaller than the tin, put the glue on the something small, right? Because if you put the glue on something big, you're gonna have extra. Okay, so always glue the something small. So you're gonna use the zip dry to adhere your photo paper and your words, okay? To adhere your canvas. This is another challenge in classes, especially mixed media. 
you have chunky things like buttons or embellishments or mm -hmm. like this canvas in the tin. Well, you don't want students to have to leave their projects for an hour or two to dry, right, to take home. This is called Quick Grip. It's made for gluing bulk, bulky embellishments, heavier embellishments, and it sets very quickly. It's also great if you have any jewelry making classes. So we're gonna take it, we're gonna go just a quick line. It doesn't have to be thick. This is not as forgiving. It will rub off, but it's a little harder. So we don't want a lot of ooze. So we're gonna put a line around all four sides and then we're gonna put it in our tin and just hold your tin upright, press it there for about a minute, let your tin lay for about a minute while we talk and you will see that it is set enough that it's not gonna move for when you go home, okay? So those are the two different glues we're using and those are the two uh, different ways we're using it. The zip dry is for your photo paper and your little words. The quick grip is for your canvas, okay? Um, okay, so let's talk about cleanup. So we have the ink on our stamp. We have our solvent, our ink cleaner. So all, these have like a little uh, scrubber tip. So all you have to do, thank you. All you have to do is run it lightly over your stamp and then you can either stamp it or wipe it with a paper towel or a baby wipe in order to clean your stamps and clean your stencils. Well, be sure y'all send a little note to Clear Snap. Let them know y'all enjoyed the class and thank you for the products. Okay, well, if nobody has any questions, just finish up, no rush. Thank you for a great class. Thank you. Yeah. You are welcome. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Oh, do y'all mind, would y'all hold up your tins and let me take a picture? Do y'all mind? I always forget to take pictures. So I would love, if y'all don't mind, to have a picture of y'all with your tins. But I do hope y'all enjoyed it, and I hope y'all learned some things. Thank you very much for coming. You sure did. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank y'all. And enjoy the rest of the show. You got a few hours left.